What's up everybody, this is our Mike, and tonight we are doing a versus, kind of a comparison of what we like better. Um, we're looking at the Droid Turbo 2 here on the left, and on the right we have the LG V10. And I have my friend David here, he is the owner of the Turbo 2 that you see with the nice lime green accents. And we are both just going to talk here about our differences in experience with the devices and which one could be better than the other. I've noticed a couple comments and a couple forms about people asking which would be a better phone to go with if you're a Verizon customer. So, David, I'll let you go on ahead and start first with what you think about your phone so far and what you came from before this. Okay. Um, so before this, I came from the Samsung Galaxy S3. Um, super old school. I hadn't upgraded in a really long time. Um, and if you've watched the uh, Samsung Sony Smartwatch 3 video by RF Mike, you know I'm military. So I had to get a, uh, a phone that could really take a beating. So that's why I went with the uh, Kevlar backing and the unbreakable or supposedly unbreakable screen um, so that I could put it through a workout um, and see what it really had to offer. Um, it's the first case or first phone rather that I haven't had a case on and felt pretty comfortable with. Um, the Kevlar backing, um, I mean, you can scratch it and make the, the color difference in the, the fabric itself. But other than that, um, it's withstood a massive beating. Um, I haven't scratched anything in regards to plastic casing or around the outside edges or anything. Um, my, uh, my new puppy did, uh, I don't know how well you can see that. Hey, let me take that. Oh, yeah. We can make that out. So my three-month-old puppy did get a hold of it um, and snatched it and hauled ass across the room. Um, and that's the most damage that he was able to do to it in probably about 30 seconds. And he's got some pretty sharp teeth. Um, so sustainability-wise, um, having no case, um, I was scared for the first week because I am that guy that drops phones and cracks screens. Um, that, that fear is totally gone now. Um, uh, as far as performance of the phone, um, I'm not as tech savvy as some people. Um, RF Michael runs circles around me with, with the tech, um, but it does what I need it to do. It'll take pictures, it'll send group text messages for work, um, it'll wake me up in the morning, and it'll play my little fun apps and games and such. Um, I'm not really into app development, so I can't speak on that behalf. Um, but... Um, out of your most so, graphically intense game that you're playing, which is, I know, what, Star Wars right now, right? Yep. Uh, what are you thinking of that and how it how well it works? Um, so as far as the Star Wars game, um, it's amazing. It's flawless. It runs incredibly smooth. Um, the picture that you can see here, I actually took that um, at work one morning. Um, that's Colorado sky in the background, and it shows up with great detail. So the camera's amazing. As far as the screen resolution and... and and ability to make stuff out, it's impeccable, I think. Um, it's not too incredibly big that it's too big for my hand. Um, and so it doesn't feel like a tablet attached to my, my pocket. Um, but, you know, motion and games and or Netflix is flawless. Um, and I, I haven't seen a lag in any kind of like processor aspects in any way. Um, but again, I'm not... I'm not doing anything that doesn't come from the Google Play Store yeah. that's already designed for just a standard user. Yep. So here's a good close-up of that photo that David's talking about. As and you guys can see, that looks really nice. No filters. Hashtag no filter. There you go. Um, Very good. So yeah. And then the display, this is an AMOLED panel inside, so it is kind of it is a Samsung panel. So that's why you like the colors of this and the look. And you said for the camera, you haven't had much trouble with it no nope. have you had many blurry pictures or not any at all um hardly at all um i do a lot of uh photography i am a photography nut um, most of my stuff is with a, a canon rebel um but when i bust out the phone when i'm stuck at work i mean the quality aspect that you can see of a black hawk helicopter in flight um i was able to um speed it up enough so that i could freeze the uh, rotor system in flight um and if you know anything about helicopters that rotor system is a pain in the ass to get a, a good photo of. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, 
so like you said camera wise it's good yep. performance has been good um now what's the flaws that you've noticed so far when um, any of the major issues that are standing out that might be correctable by future software updates so my biggest flaw um i i have this really bad habit of waking up in the morning connecting it to my shower speaker and starting to stream my uh google music and your shower speaker's Bluetooth. Yep. Uh, so I'm currently running the Alltech Lansing um, all weatherproof shower speaker um, because you cannot kill that speaker. Um, if RF Mike wants to do a video on that one, um, that thing has been put through and it's been run over by a Humvee and it's still going. <laughs> That's good. Um, that and yeah, this is one of the smaller ones too. It's I'll compare it to size here, everybody, as you can see next to the Droid Turbo and the LG V10 Turbo 2, my bad, the V10, it is about the size of a phone. So when I'm not out in the field um, or out training or pre-flighting an aircraft, that sits on a, uh, a shelf in my bathroom. So if I'm connected to that speaker as well as streaming my Google Music, maybe a 20-minute a shower on the long end, I will, uh, I'll start off with 100% battery and I'll come back with about 80% battery. I've noticed that if I'm attached to a speaker hardwired, there's hardly any battery death. Or if my phone is plugged in while I'm streaming and Bluetooth, there's hardly any battery death. But if I'm streaming and Bluetoothing at the same time, it will eat the battery alive. Um, I've actually done a, a, a test on it to see exactly how long I could go. Um, I was streaming uh, Google Music and attached to this blue speaker at work. Um, I had, you know, all my bars, 4G, um, wasn't connected to any Wi-Fi or anything, so solely on streaming on my data. Um, and I lasted maybe about two and a half to three hours, and my battery, or my phone was blinking at me, asking me if I wanted to turn battery saver on. And was it hot at all? It was, it was pretty, it was pretty warm, um, but I get, it'll actually get a lot more hot if I'm Doing plugging the phone in and it's rapid charging on the rapid charger. Yeah. and streaming and Bluetoothing, it'll get almost too hot to hold. Yeah, and I can see that because the quick charge 2.0 technology or the turbo charging that comes on the Motorola devices, it puts out such a higher amperage rate, faster, more power going to the phone, and yeah, it's going to get warm. Um, so one of the other little quirks about the phone, I just now thought about this. Don't share my password. <laughs> there you go. Um, so when I go to connect my... Bluetooth. Mm. I have four devices paired. I've got my smartwatch, my Sony soundbar in the living room, this uh, blue speaker here, and then my JBL micro wireless, which is the JBL clip. Um, and that's always in my flight gear. Mm -hmm. But it'll continuously try and connect. Um, I've noticed that sometimes within the house, it'll actually try and simultaneously connect to the Sony speaker as well as the blue, uh, what I've labeled the blue speaker. Yeah. Um, so it'll try and simultaneously connect to those. And I have to actually wait for it to not find any of them to connect to, to something connect else. To one. Okay. So it, it won't allow me to choose what to connect to until it realizes that it doesn't have a standard default to connect to. And in turning on my Bluetooth um, developers, just to hint, I would like to choose what it connects to prior to it connecting. Because if my wife is downstairs watching TV on our Sony soundbar and it connects to my blue speaker, or rather it doesn't connect to my blue speaker in time when I turn it on, it'll automatically change over my uh, Sony uh, soundbar downstairs and turn the sound off on her. Okay. So I'm wondering, part of it is it's just looking for what device you used it on last and it's trying to reconnect to that. It's actually not the device you used it last. It's just the first that it can possibly connect to. Okay. Um, yeah, that's... I'm, not, I'm really surprised right now that it didn't connect downstairs. Yeah, because I know we have the TV room. on downstairs in the living room. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, so that's probably, I'm sure that's probably something that can be fixed software-wise here in the future. It's nothing that, yeah, we can deal with now unless we were to root the phone and hack it and then we could find some other methods for it. So besides the Bluetooth issue, how's everything else held up? Um, amazing. Um, I was kind of worried that the puppy biting through the corner of it would mess up the speaker. Um, I've lost no... Uh, as you can see, I, I haven't had any dead pixel issues. I, I haven't lost any sound capability in the speaker right here next to the tooth mark. Yeah. Um, I've dropped it. I've kicked it. Um, it's fallen in a puddle. It's been buried in snow. Regret. 
It was it was probably about four or five inches worth of snow, but it was and enough it, to bury the phone. Yeah, and there's no problems with it, and that's part, and that's Done. good. In fact, that's a good part because Motorola and um, what was it? Sony are the only two companies that nano coat their devices from the manufacturer. So yeah, that's why you haven't had any. It's water repellent, not fully water proof, but water repellent versus Sony's phones. They've made theirs completely waterproof under the fact that their ports have mm -hmm. uh, their charging ports and all are all sealed in. The newer ones that are coming out, like the the new Xperia Five, they actually um, have actually left their ports open, like on LG's devices, but they still nano coated them, so they're not going to be damaged. They'll still be usable. And and this may be me behind the times um, and this may be a standard thing for Android that I'm not I just found out it's one of those things I'm probably late to the party on but if I'm connected to my smartwatch on my phone yeah. and I'm holding my phone I don't have to put in an unlock code yeah. if I'm within a certain radius of it which now, is and, and that's because useful. of what's known as what is it it's a smart unlock and that's due to a Bluetooth pairing. If you allow that Bluetooth device, whether it's your watch, a Bluetooth speaker, as long as you're in range of one of those devices, the phone won't pull up your PIN or your passcode that we just saw, like your uh, your uh, pattern. So I'm just late to the party. Yeah, well, it's it's <laughs> something new. It just came out uh, maybe one version ago. So when Lollipop came out is when they started doing that. It's where you it would be a smart unlock device to where as long as you're in range of that it'll it'll work just fine and for the v10 on my part um you guys have seen the other devices i've had i wish i had my friend cameron here with us because he had actually dropped his out four-wheeling with his brother and they were out at his uncle's place and they were in razors so they were in the the quads the doom buggies and his came out of his pocket now he, Keep in mind, you guys see that I have my standard backpack on and I have a bumper and my glass screen protector. He only has a glass screen protector, no bumper, the regular rubber back as well. But his fell out of his pocket riding passenger and it got ran over by another Razor scooter. And it actually only took a chunk right out of, if I can show you guys, right out of the bottom. Like obviously I have the Verizon logo going on his, he's on T-Mobile so he doesn't have that. But it took a chunk right out of the bottom of his rubber. So as for Cameron's, at the bottom where his got hit, besides that, it was buried in six inches of dirt. He flipped it over, and he only had scratches on his tempered glass screen protector, and everything else was okay. The phone worked perfectly fine after being run over by a two-seater or four-seater uh, razor. So that is about it on that. Um, I do have one other phone we're going to show off in this, and in the comments... On a couple forms, people have said with their rubber backings, they've picked up a lot of lint. As you can see, we are on a lint cloth. I'm sure there's hair in it somewhere. And we get nothing on this phone. There's lots of dog hair on here. Yeah, we have some dog hair on this, but this is not picking up any dog hair, any other lint particles. Nothing you can see. It's coming out pretty clean. And this is the pure rubber backing on the Turbo 2. And if we look at the... Yours is the ballistic nylon. You can only see just some minor scratch marks, but there's nothing to it. Watch yours pick up stuff. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if mine picks up anything. With the V10, how the rubber is on the back of that. Nothing. And we have nothing. Nice and clean. So, as for uh, a comment that another person left on a forum, is they're like, which phone would be better to get? And as for David, like he said, he's military. It honestly does depend on what you're looking for. If you don't care about having an unbreakable display, um, I would say go with the V10. Um, the 16 megapixel camera is good on it. It has OIS built in, hardware OIS, so the image stabilization when taking two HDR shots, the pictures stitch together perfectly. Um, it does have the slightly bigger display than the Turbo 2. Turbo 2 is a 5. Point, well, I think yours is a 5.5 yeah. versus the v10 is a 5.7 plus the v10 also has the secondary display at the top so that actually takes us to almost a 5.9 inch display um, front facing camera on the turbo 2 is a 5 megapixel with a front facing flash the v10 is a 5 megapixel but it also has a wide angle lens as well so you can do wider shots 
Um, so there's two cameras on the front and a single camera 16 megapixel shooter versus the Turbo 2 is a 21 megapixel shooter. Both of these, as you can see, are single LED flashes. The V10 actually has um, a light sensor. And I don't know why I'm playing music. There we go. The V10 actually has a light sensor for recognizing white balance and it's laser autofocus versus the autofocus built in to the Turbo 2. And that's about it. No laser autofocus to it. So that's the differences in camera. But yeah, if you're somebody that really needs a phone that can withstand a beating, go with the Turbo 2. Yeah, just because of the display. With the screen alone, you're not going to get... You can absorb the damage. And then like David showed on his, we have the damage from the doggy, from the puppy. But that can be replaced because these shatter shields actually peel back. And there is the Motorola website you can find these on. They're 25 bucks, and plus cost of shipping. And once you get that, you're basically at a whole new front screen. So that is a nice thing to that. Versus if you break your standard glass that comes on your LG G10, V10, which is a Gorilla Glass 4, um, you basically got to pay your deductible to get a new one or just slap on a tempered glass like I've done. So... If size isn't a, isn't a thing, you don't care about it, you don't care about display, go with a V10. If you want a strong, durable phone that is waterproof, go with the Turbo 2. So that's our mic. If you guys like this video, please hit your like, comment, and subscribe. And we will. if you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And we will see you in the next one.